Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just uh, down here uh, doing a bit of clean up. I do this most Sunday evenings before we open for business on Monday. And uh, was just servicing this cutaway gearbox, which is a fairly unique thing. It was made for me by my friend and mentor, Michael Schneering, and given to me as a housewarming present when I moved into the hangar 12 months ago. It shows the workings of everything, the shift cassette, the shift pawl, the intermediate and output shaft, the input shaft down through here, wherever that hole is, there it is there. You also see a bit hard in this light, but the shift cassette through there. That's the output shaft and the smaller bearing on the output end. And this gear here, this gear here, where my thumb is trying to find it, there it is, is the uh, first gear. Now yesterday I put a post up about some gear oil and it was about a, a, a conversation that I had with a guy about oils and what happens in these gearboxes. And so I was kind of trying to just share the knowledge and get people to think about their bikes and look around. These gearboxes are constant mesh. That means every cog in the gearbox every cog in the gearbox turns against another cog all the time. A gear never engages with another gear unless you call the dogs on here, there, you can see them there, sliding into the holes in this cog. But the cogs never mesh. They are in constant mesh. Any time the gearbox is turning, they are all turning. Whether it is in first to fifth gear or neutral. Inside that cog there, there is a brass bush. This one. This is the only brass bush or brass anything inside an airhead gearbox. You can see from my hand the size of it. That's a used one. It's probably serviceable. I just kept it to show people what they look like. They're a wear item. They wear out. They're inside a gear that cops a lot of hard work. It's a straight cut, massive gear. Six dogs in it. Um, very, very heavy gear. Um, and obviously to avoid damage to the shafts and the gears, what BMW in their wisdom did was produce a brass bush um, to be replaced instead of the gear. The gear hardly ever wears out, to be honest, um, but the bush does. And that brings me to the next part of my conversation. This here is a, I put a photograph of this up and you will find that it says, not suitable for most synchronized transmissions. It's a GL5 gear in this book here. There is a specification saying that GL5 gears, uh, gearboxes, sorry, GL5 spec oil can be used in BMW gearboxes. And I put a photo of that up yesterday too. I have about five of these and I have a folder with a fair few workshop updates in them. Uh, some of them are quite bizarre to read, but that's just the way I guess manufacturers do. They're never going to admit liability for anything. And I think everybody knows that. So I'm just sitting here at my workbench and thinking about this and I got kind of hijacked with that post yesterday. But what I was talking about was gear oils and weights. Now in Australia, it, I'm sitting here in Brisbane at the moment. It's been a, a rainy, miserable day. This is in Australia. And we have had a day of about 18 or 19 degrees Celsius plus. This is July. It's the middle of our winter. So... In the summertime, temperatures reach in the high 30 degrees centigrade and oils in BMW boxer airheads that were designed in the 1990s as the latest are a completely different animal to what you could buy when they were new. So talking about oils, I've tried every different kind of oil in my bike. I used to run uh, Molly Bond oil in there when you could buy it. It was used in, in uh, heavy transport in 140 designations. I used to buy it in 90. They only made it in limited quantities in runs, and I used to buy a 20-litre drum of it at a time. 
You can't get it anymore unless you buy a 200 litre drum and I haven't got any kidneys that I am not using uh, to sell to buy one of those. So I went back to my old standard which was Castrol 90 LS, limited slip. Now the reason I use limited slip and this was put to me by a few people but features and benefits, optimise stable friction characteristics for effective operation of limited slip differentials through the drain interval, throughout the drain interval. Very good anti-wear and load carrying performance even under high load conditions prolongs component life. Now, why that? Well, this gearbox has massive steel gears big spline shafts way bigger than you find in just about any other bike on the road of a similar capacity they are constant mesh you find these constant mesh gearboxes in tourist coaches some trucks um, very few cars but heavy applications generally so even though they're an agricultural thing they were in tractors back in the 20s and 30s they are very strong and robust gearbox, very simple, but very, like the rest of the bike actually, they're very complicated if you don't know how to set them up. There is not one thing that you can do in these boxes that you can't put in backwards. All the thrust washers can go in backwards. I pulled a gearbox apart the day before yesterday that was having a lot of trouble and grief and it hadn't been ridden for a long time when I took it apart. That fifth gear there has got a thrust washer that sits up against a step in the shaft there and what they had done is they had put the thrust washer on that side of the gear so the overall length was the same when I turned the box it didn't want to mesh properly and that was what was causing all the grief it's very easy to do they work hard I've tried 7590 I've tried 80W90 which is what's specced in the owner's manuals in this country and I just find in my own bike uh, that in hot conditions, traffic start stop out in the outback where temperatures can reach 40 plus degrees. Um, if you use a multi grade oil, after a while, when they get hot, you can hear them. And I believe that's because the lighter grade oil is, is reducing the cushioning effect in these big heavy gears in between each other which are turning all the time there's a good shot of the dogs and the holes there in uh, I'm not sure just looking at it now I think that's probably second gear um, and that one down the bottom there is the helical fifth gear which um, is the one that gets replaced with a taller fifth gear the gear on the other side of the shaft that one there is the one you replace if you're putting in a lower first gear so 90 weight oil is what I use in my own bikes. Uh, it is a bit clunky if it's a cold day when you first start it up, a bit slow, a bit sluggish. Once it warms up, it seems to me to maintain a better noise output than the multi-grade oil, even the ADW90 Penrite, which is probably one of the better ones around. And in all the years that I've been using that oil and in all the gearboxes that I've done, I've got, I, I've done five in the last you know eight days or something and I've got four or five here still to do uh, one of them is an absolute mission it's it's a it's a gearbox that's been full of water another gearbox was purchased which had good gears in it but which had been put together incorrectly and smashed the back housing so I've got to make one gearbox out of two gearboxes when I get a chance to do that not trying to start a war not trying to do anything trying to say to people on this web page this it's it's very difficult when you're trying to share knowledge and cause people to think when you've got washer counters who shoot from the lip and and sprout all kinds of crap that they've read on the internet or seen in a forum that's fine what i'm suggesting that people do is if you have a doubt about what i've said go and research it i don't mind if you don't agree with me but what i'm trying to do is say same with engine oil People use 10W50 in their bikes in Australia. 10W50, which gives them an extra 10, they say. The W stands for winter. We don't have severe winters in this country. This book says 80 below 5 degrees centigrade, 90 above 5 degrees centigrade in the gearbox section of that book. 
5 degrees centigrade in Brisbane, we would be all running around claiming we'd just reached a world record for the coldest day we've had since Methuselah was in underpants. Fair dinkum. We don't get really cold winters here. Same with engine oil. I will use 20W, so 20, the lowest winter spec that they use in those oils, 60 Penrite oil with a high, high zinc level in it. I use it in all my customers' bikes and all my own bikes. But I will not use 10W50 because what happens is when you put that oil in and it gets hot, you can hear the engine. It's not knocking or banging, it just becomes louder. And I believe that's because the film of the oil is thinner and is transmitting oil better. Now, it may not be thinner, but you can hear the difference. I've tried it. I don't use it. I use 20W50 or 20W60 in the best zinc content oil that I can buy uh, without going to ridiculous points. I know this has been a long video. This is my workbench. I sit here all day working away on various projects and things and I have a absolute mission of work in front of me every day of the week. Uh, so I'm not doing this to tout for business. I'm actually trying to help people understand a little more about their bikes and take away some of the mystery and the, the, the myths and, and the scare tactics that people put into folks over what these bikes need. Most of the components in them are very similar to what you will find in any car of that vintage. <coughs> Especially if you look at air-cooled car engines like VWs. There you go. Ride safely, stay well.